On the last episode of Greg Hooks Up His Old Computer Equipment, I tried to hook up my Atari 8-bit and my floppy drive over here, but the floppy drive didn't work, so I think the power adapter was the problem. So, I got this. What could it be? What could it be? Not even opened. Honestly, this is the first time I'm actually trying this. This says tear at perforation to open. Ah, that's good enough. Ooh, AC adapter. Ah, look at that. 120 volt AC for the input and nine volt VAC for the output. That's the key and also this connector. All right, I'm gonna hook it up for the first time. There we go. All right, so I really wanna try my Atari graphics disc first, but I'm actually gonna go with my programs DOS 2.0 disc just to see if it, uh, if it boots up. Ooh, that sounds nice. Oh, I don't hear, what's it doing? I hear it beeping and I hear the drive spinning. It's doing something for sure. Sounds like it's loading. Oh my God, <laughs> it works. I got DOS back. Oh man, I'm so excited. I can't believe this disc works after like 30 years. That is incredible. All right, so let's see what's on this disc. A for disk directory. Search, spec, list, file, just enter. That's all I ever did. It's trying to access the drive. See what's on there. Hello? I think it's getting hung up on something. So if I pop that drive out, maybe it'll cancel it. Oh, error. Okay, it didn't uh, say anything that time, but previously I just ran that command and I got a whole list of files, even though it did get hung up on something. All right, now I thought I'd try a couple of different uh, Discs. I'm gonna try the, uh, the Atari graphics one here see if I can read the files off of that. Read the files. Please. Please. Yes! Yes! Let's try my Star Trek disc. Let's see what's on there. I was writing an old uh, Star Trek game, kind of like the classic computer game, uh, myself years ago. And uh, it'd be kind of cool if it was still here. Looks like it's still there. Unbelievable. Alright, so I had to look up the command. It's load space, quotation mark, D0, which is the number of my drive, which is disk zero, colon, and then the name of your file, which in my case, it was just Star Trek. Without any extension, it's just Star Trek. Oh, we got stars. Star Trek. Oh, it's loading something. What's it doing? Oh, Star Trek, the computer. Oh, it loaded like the font. I remember this. I remember I changed the fonts so that it looks more Star Trek-y. Oh, this is so cool. What is your game selection? Um, let's do one, I guess. Enterprise, it's loading something. Probably my other game. Oh, here we go. Look, kinda looks like the Enterprise from above. Oh, here, oh, now we got something. <gasps> oh, oh, this is so cool. Help for help. Uh, HLP, enter. Here's a list of commands at your disposal. Oh my God, I can't believe that I wrote this so long ago. Oh my gosh, this is cool. Okay, so let's do um, LRS. Long range, oh, check that out. Shields are down, Captain. Shields to up or down, let's say up. Status report, oh, Klingons, 45, oh my gosh. Uh, power's 100%, shields 100%, shields up, star bases. I can't believe I wrote this, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do move, M-O-V, and then it gives you this directional thing, tells you which way do you wanna move. Okay, so I'll say uh, five. Warp factor. One would equal one sector. So if I do 0 0.5, I should move like halfway. Yep, I went from here down to there. Check that out, that's so cool. Now if there was only some Klingons here for me to fight. Let's see what this program looks like. I wrote this, I wrote all this when I was a kid. Here's a disc I have that's called ML Games. Some of these are machine language games that I wrote out of uh, magazines like Analog and Antic and things like that. Death Zone, let's do Death Zone, D Zone. Yeah, this was from Analog, Analog Computer by S. Hillen. I'm gonna use my old uh, Atari joystick here. Start. Oh yeah, this is like, uh, it's like uh, Battle Zone. Although much more colorful and these guys are like coming right at me like crazy. Goodbye. 
This is a cool game. Oh, except when it crashes. <laughs> Alright, let's try this game called Avalanche. I think it's kind of like Kaboom, where you're supposed to catch things? I don't remember. Oh no, it's not. It's not at all like that. It's more like Huber. Okay. Oh, but not as good. Oh, oh, it's hard to move. Go. I guess it's just an avalanche of red balls. Track and field. How did I get this on this uh, floppy? Go, 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 go. It's kind of weird I'm doing this with a joystick. Go, 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 go. I win. Oops. <laughs> I hit the button, I swear. Oh, you gotta hit it twice. Oh, I scratched. Well, I only hit it once that time. Go, 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 run fast. Throw it. I qualified. Sweet. Ah! All right, now I'm gonna try this game called Fortress.exe. Start. I do remember it's a Tetris game. Back when Tetris was the big thing, I was playing. I played this a lot. Pretty fancy, huh? With all them graphics and everything. Pretty good game if I could get a stick here. I'm screwed. I'm screwed. I can't put this anywhere. Oh yeah, now you give me the stick. Your randomizer algorithm is suspect. Oh my gosh, it's the actual Activision Decathlon game. Cracked by the Cruiser. So I must have downloaded this off of a uh, BBS or something. Go, 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 go. Oh yeah, I just beat you out the last second, sucker. This seems a little slower even though I know it's not. Okay. How the heck would you get this game off of a cartridge? I guess it could have come on a floppy disk and, and uh, cracked and all that good stuff. But if it was on a cartridge, I mean, I don't know how you would have been able to read the ROM back then. Shot put. Go! Ooh, that's pretty far. I can never do the high jump in any, any virtual sports game. This one's no different. All right, well, somehow I managed to get uh, the Activision Decathlon. David Crane is so proud. Here's an Antic disc powering up the XE game machine. Let's see what's on this bad boy. Antic monthly disc, June 1988. Wow, this is before I graduated high school. Let's do hell. Um, how do I get down to hell? Loading hell. Okay, kind of appropriate with the uh, red background and everything, I guess. Oh, here we go. Escape from hell. <laughs> I think I remember this game. Oh yes, I do. Oh, <laughs> this is funny. I totally remember this game now. I played this a lot. Got to collect all the A's, avoid the devil. Oops, there we go. All right, penance continues. He's waiting for me behind that A there. It's like he thinks I don't see him, but I totally see him back there. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Oh no, he's gonna get me, he's gonna get me. Oops, I just killed myself. <laughs> this analog disc that I had from back in the day. Let's see what's on that guy. Oh, pff. I found an old summons. Why would I have a summons in my uh, analog floppy disc sleeve? Here's one called um, Marble MG. Okay, yeah, it's kind of like um, Chinese checkers or something like that. Or maybe a, a really larger version of that game you play at um, Cracker Barrel with the pegs. It's kind of the same idea. Let's see what's on this disc called Card Games. Get the feeling there's some card games on there. Okay, I remember I did this years ago where I added all these um, menus on everything. Man, I was so smart back then. I wonder what happened. Bet. How much am I gonna bet? Okay, which ones are we gonna discard? Let's get rid of the six and we'll get rid of the draw. I think I lost. One player games. Okay, so that's what this is. This is my one player games disc. Dragon Chase. Okay. What the heck? Oh, I have no idea what's going on in this game. Lawnmower by Paul Tupazugwatsky. Okay, start. Yeah, I remember this game. Just cut the grass and avoid the uh, tall heads with legs. Done. Oh, wait, no, there's one more left. Ooh, that was close. Diamond Day by Steven Stout. 
Oh. Okay, this is like oil's well. Oh, and it's got really loud, obnoxious noise. Can I backtrack? Oh, I can backtrack. Oh, but I can't let him, t he can't touch me. That's the whole thing. What happens if I hit the button? Yep, it steps me back. It's a lot like oil's well. Wireball by Jean Goulet. Basically, this is me, that little circular thing. And I just had to eat all the dots. Seems easy, right? But this thing is kind of like Spider-Man. Because if I go back the other direction, boop, boop, you can jump around. It's kind of a neat game, except for one slight problem. There's just too many of these ball things to be collecting. All right, here's a disc called Two Player Only Games or Versus Computer. So I guess it's a competitive disc. Ooh, Tron Light Cycles. Let's do that one for two players only. Well, it kind of sucks. Oh, I need another player. <laughs> this would be so cool if there was. I don't think I wrote this, but I think maybe a friend of mine did. I don't remember. But yeah, it would be cool if we could, you know, chase each other around. I need another, I need another player. Okay, here's a disc called Space Games. Space Race. Press B for left or N for right. Okay. Okay, yeah, this is a game that I made. Actually, I think I found it in, uh, again, in a magazine, but it wasn't, it didn't have any graphics to it. It was pretty boring. They were using ASCII graphics. So I um, used my little tool that I could change the, the font set, the standard character set, and I made all these little graphics and stuff. What happens when you crash? Does it explode? Yep, explodes. Yep, that's all it is. Kind of neat. That's a good memory. There we go. You can see this is a game called Space Race by Family Computing Magazine, Graphics and Revisions by Greg George. That would be me. Basically all I did was change all the graphics, but look at this. Look at, look at all the, I changed all the graphics, all the, uh, the text, so that it looks more, you know, computer-y, computer graphics-y. Okay, here's a really loud one called uh, Attack on the Doom Star. I'm sure this is a Star Wars ripoff, right? Can I just fly out of here? To, can I just leave? See you later, sorry. Sorry about your luck. Okay, here's one called Desert Chase, which is kind of weird. If I hold the joystick up and down, then I can like make the my shot go out further than, than before. Oh, I'm screwed. Oh, you got me. Okay, this is a game called Cliffhanger, and what you have to do is uh, grab this meteor thing that's about to crash into your wall. Oh crap, I'm doing terrible at it. Uh oh, I think I'm gonna die. There we go, I got one. You grab it and then just throw it in the water. Oh, that was another close call. This one's called Invasion 3? Oh, okay, this is interesting. Can I shoot these guys? I guess so. Oh man, there's no breaks in the action. This game just keeps going forever. All right, next, let's do one called Adventure Games. Ooh, it's full of adventure and garbage trucks outside. All right, this game is called Bomb Squad by Paul Tupa Zawuski. I think I saw his name earlier. Yeah, this, you know, this kind of reminds me of um, Mighty Bomb Jack, except with a jetpack. You have to get up here and get all these bombs, but I think you have to like, there you go. Touch them with your feet or something? Uh, why can't I just, it'd be great if I could just touch them just regular. Oh, and I'm dead. Here's one that's definitely an adventure. If it's the one I'm thinking of, it may be one of my favorite type-in games of all time from back in the day. Escape from my house. Escape from being stuck inside of here. It's Escape from Epsilon by J.D. Kasten. Probably one of the more famous type-in programmers from back in the day. Oh man, I remember this. I love this game. I like the little joysticks there on the ground. This is the tricky part, because you have to jump and then move. Whew. Got the key. Da -da 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 -da. Yay, I escaped from Alpha. Oh, yay, I escaped from Alpha. 
Oops, I fell into the joystick pit again. Oh, I'm dead. Anyway, this game I used to play a lot, uh, just because I just love the graphics and the sounds are not that great, but <laughs> it's just a, such a fun game to try to escape from Epsilon. Now this is a game called The Gantlet. Um, I'm not sure why it wasn't just called Gauntlet. What direction should I move? Basically, you're, you're trying to get out. You're trying to get out over here. So I should say right. How many steps should I take? Four or three. Up, one. And then right, 11 again. Yep, that gets me out. Now what do I do? Up, five. Yeah, see, this is the part where I don't remember. Somehow you're supposed to find the one spot in here that you're able to walk through and then you can get to the next level. And I, I do remember getting past this, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. But. And then lastly on this disc that I want to show you is a game called A Rogue. This is the Atari version of Rogue. Uh, this is another game that I modified the graphics slightly and uh, made it look more like caves and stuff. So I'm in this position and apparently I've been attacked by a weasel. That happens a lot on the internet. Just keep attacking. I hit the weasel. Oh, I added the sound effects too. Sounds like he's like slashing. Splat. Now you smell as bad as the weasel did. <laughs> you find a leather suit of armor. You're wearing leather. Do you take it? Nah. It disappears with a poof. Okay, this time it says a giant worm attacks. Um, it says cast. So let's do cast a fireball. Fireball. Did it work? I pulverized the giant worm. The giant worm misses. So that's basically Rogue for the Atari 8-bit computer. How do you like that uh, bar going up there? Yay for uh, vertical sinks not matching up. All right, and now lastly, the thing I wanted to do the last video that I couldn't get to work, Atari graphics and all my pictures. Hope I can get this to work. Of course, we know the, from the last video, this pen has kind of been kind of dodgy, so, oh. All right, we got to get creative again. I'm pointing it at that thing there, okay. Oh my gosh, there it is. Load completed. Awesome, look at that. Oh, there it is, there's a picture of Ariel that I drew. Can't believe I drew this so many years ago with this uh, light pen, oh, it just fell off. <laughs> oh, but this is interesting. I just went ahead and booted the disc just like normal and this started to come up. Apparently I drew something that has my name and says presents. What could I be presenting? There it is, I drew that. That's the, the Toyota Celica that I drew. Yeah, I was a big uh, Toyota Celica fan at the time and that uh, me drawing a Toyota Celica. This is me drawing a, a screenshot from Paperboy. I just like that 3D style kind of thing. And oh, here's a, here's a tree that I drew that's shaped like a heart, isn't that cool? This is kind of a fancy schmancy Atari kind of drawing. That's neat. You don't see stuff like that every day. And there's Ariel again. This is probably my best one. I think this is my favorite for sure. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for my hooking up and checking out all my old games on my floppy disks. And one of the things I want to do is somehow get the data off of those disks and you know maybe put them on a flash drive or something. I really would prefer not to lose the data that I spent my childhood writing. And I think there are ways to do that. If you know of any, please write a comment down below. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it. Hope you all have a great day. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you again soon.